I don't think anybody has ever had a problem thinking that I'm weird. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think some people got used to the idea that I'm a little weird. Okay, maybe I'm a little different. Weird not might weird may not be the best word for it. Unusual might be. But one of the unusual things that I've run into is that to everything there is a purpose under the sun. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to rejoice, a time to be sad, a time to really eat your Rice Krispies and other times to eat your Wheaties. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of snap, crackle, and pop. Other times it's just kind of like dogging through the work routine because you know what, you need some protein in order to build up some muscles. But the older I've gotten, the less I've been worried about what other people do and really what God wants me to do because I don't feel that peer pressure anymore that I used to feel. You know, the have to's and want to's and should do's. The Bible is full of a lot of shoulds and woulds and have to's and ifs and you know choices that you get to make. God really wants you to adapt to his way of doing things until you want to do it his way. And so a lot of times he tells you you should do something and then eventually because of love you want to do something. Well, I used to love going to church every day of the week. Matter of fact, I started like, you know, just on fire doing it all the time. But even when I was going to church every day of the week, there was one day of the year I just really didn't want to go to church. Well, I should say the first year I did want to go to church. The second year I didn't want to go to church. Easter. Yeah, you know, Easter, Easter Bunny, you know, the eggs, the parade thing. You know, Easter with the whole idea of all the people, you know, come to church in their really nice looking clothes, you know, and people that won't go to church any other day of the year, you know, they get dragged to church on Easter. You know, and you know you're going to get a salvation message, you know, out of Easter. And when you've been in ministry a long time, you can get two different ways of looking at salvation messages. One is you could get burned out and get tired of giving them, you know, which is kind of silly because really, it's why we're here. But again, some people get a little weird about that. The other is that you could be creative, I guess, and come up with new ways, which is kind of like, well, that's kind of like saying it. Or you could just, you know, kind of like realize that maybe in the realization of the knowledge of your personal relationship with God, somebody's going to want to know about what you got if you're enjoying what you have. But if you don't enjoy what you got, why bother? I used to tell people this way. If you don't want to go to church, don't go! <laughs> And a few people took exceptions with me on that one. You know, they, they think that, you know, you got to go, whether you like it or not. Force that food down their throat. Take a spoonful of sugar and co cover it, you know, and sh Mary Poppins it. Well, I'm living 20-some-odd years later, maybe 30-some-odd years later, and I can see a lot of sugar coating going on in order to get that spoonful of, you know, spiritual food down you, you know, and that there's a lot of sugar coating that I'm not so sure is anything good for you. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's beginning to look kind of like Mary Poppins went to church, you know, and somehow all we have is a song and dance routine. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. A lot of what I see on Easter sometimes is good intentions and, you know, the results are kind of interesting. So, I'm a little weird, you know, I like to vent my feelings on video, but I like to also express the solutions that we have available to us, because I don't think we should proffer a problem unless we present a solution. In other words, there's a lot of people out there that whine and complain and, you know, nag and nag and nag and nag, and all you hear is, you know, they look like a horse wandering around in the field, you know, just a big old nag, you know. If you ever know what a nag is, then you know, you know, yeah, that's a nag. But I don't like to be one of those kinds of people that says, oh, you know, I don't like Sunday on Easter because it's Easter Sunday, you know, and it's kind of like, I've heard it all before, and I've heard it all again, you know, and I'm not one of those kinds of people. I like to go, when I work 
behind the scenes on Easter, or I work behind the scenes in ministry. Because you see, one of the things that's really big on Easter is the point about salvation and gospel isn't so much about being served as it is serving. And that's kind of where I've been all along since I grew up as a Christian. I, I no longer want to be served. I want to serve. So a lot of times when I find myself for some or every reason on Sunday on Easter, I'm usually being served. I'm just not real big on being served. You know, it's like, all right, serve it up, fine, whatever, you know, and I'll eat. And I usually, you know, begrudgingly enjoy it, you know, and it's for me a token observance, you know, and that's the way I feel about a lot of things, you know, it's like they're token observances, you know, of things that people do when they do what they do. Now, you catch me on any other day of the week. I love going to church. It's like, yeah, you know, let's go check it out. You know, I'm always one to dive it in. You know, when the water is too cold, when the water's not right, when it's shallow, when it's deep, whatever it is, I'm diving in because I want to find out. <laughs> but lately, I've been noticing a change in my life. I'm finding that I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to be where God wants me to be. I want to enjoy where and what I'm doing because God is with me where and what I'm doing. And that means that I have to evaluate a lot of things and choose to go a more excellent way. Sometimes it means going alone, away from the crowds, because after all, that's what Easter was, you know, during Pesach, you know, during Pesach, during the Passover, during the time of celebration when they were going to declare Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords and they're going to cast off Roman rule. Only by the end of the week they were casting off Jesus' rule and wanted to have Roman rule back because Rome was making the rules at the time. And so they decided to stick with Barabbas rather than Jesus and they decided to give up what God was trying to get them to understand. I find that true in a lot of ways when it's a mass of people. I don't like to go to mass crowded affairs. I like to go to intimate settings and then I enjoy it seems like more kind of a intimacy and a fellowship of the few that might be there. Jesus said it this way, many are called but few are chosen. He had lots and thousands of people always following him but he always kept his somewhat confidences to the twelve that followed him more intimately. The Apostles, those that were chosen by him and chosen by his father to be his disciples. They were going to learn from him and be instructed in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God on earth. And so, a lot of times, I used to beat myself up thinking, well, man, you know, I must be weird because I don't like Easter. But then I would go and watch on Easter, oh, I don't know, a movie, you know, like Godspell, and I'd get all excited and I'd be like, yeah! You know, and be pretty cool about it. Or I'd watch Jesus of Nazareth, I'd be, yeah, ooh, ye, you know, and get all excited and teary eyed. Or I'd watch some other movie, you know, The Robe or, you know, Ten Commandments or, you know, something, you know, that would just seem like it summed it up for me. Or there'd be one worship song that I'd play 100 times, you know, all day long. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Right now I have a headache, so it's kind of hard to be thinking straight. Kind of a borderline migraine, matter of fact kind of a little knot, you know, I got stuck here and I got sinuses going at the same time. So it's always interesting because the fascinating thing about what God can do is that you can have, you know, a headache, but you can be inspired by the Lord and you can have both at the same time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Count it all down when you follow the Bible's trials and tribulations, knowing that the producing of your headache will cause you to mellow out, you know, and kind of take easy, especially if it's a migraine. Ooh. But having endured those things, I've learned also that sometimes you go to things that you have to endure in order to get to the blessing part. When I went to a service today, it was an Easter service, and you know, it's like well, it like most other Easter services, people were there. More people than probably usual. And they were dressed up nice, and people were dressed nice. And I enjoyed it, you know, I mean, up to a point, you know, it was just the same old, same old. But God spoke to me about it, you know, and I kept thinking, I enjoyed it because 
I ask God to go with me. I ask God to be with me. I ask God to show me where he would want me to be, and that was where God wanted me to be, so I enjoyed it because I found and discovered that God was there. God was there because I was there, and because I was there, God was with me, because I asked God to be with me every day. And so wherever I go, really, God is with me. And that brings me to the point about Easter, or if you find yourself like out of sorts and not of sorts with all those that are around you. Sometimes there's a time and a season where maybe you don't feel like being there, and you go home instead. Now, I'm not saying do this all the time, but quite frankly, in this information age that we have, you know, we've got every possibility and every kind of availability of getting you know, all the information you could possibly want off the internet or off of your iPhone or smartphone or whatever it may be. And everybody's streaming everything live and recorded and panned and canned and you know, done whatever. Sadly, a lot of them are, you know, doing it for the sake of the camera, you know, and okay, you know, that may be true. God can use it anyways. So you see, it's not so much about Easter the day or Sunday the day or any day that you choose to celebrate, whatever day it may be. It's really about, is God with you? Is God in you? Are you going where God wants you to go? Are you doing what God wants you to do? In other words, today is the day that the resurrection happened. And had God been in them and God been with them, then they would have recognized what it was about him that was so different and unique that they would have known he would have rose again on the third day. But instead, they were despairing and saddenly not having a realization of faith until God revealed himself there. It took the Holy Spirit much later to finally put it all together for them. But one of the things we discover in that moment of all this news coming in and information, well, he's risen, no, he's not, yeah, he is, he's not, is that we find everyone's got an opinion about what you should do. Some people just do it and go for it. Peter was one of those kinds of people. He just dove in. He just went for it. He's just going for gung-ho all the time. You know, as soon as he heard Jesus risen, bam, he's at the door. You know, John's chasing him. Peter, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm we got a 50-yard dash going, you know, and they were like running. Because where they were at, believe me, you don't want to go running. It's hot, it's dry, it's arid, you know, and you go running in a town full of Jews. They want to know why you're running. <laughs> Did you steal something? I mean, after all, there were, you know, millions of Jews in the city at the time. You know, they were just exiting because they had just gotten over with, with Passover, you know, but still there were a lot of people around. So running wasn't a good idea, but they did anyways. So they ran there. And I find it interesting that he didn't think about it for very long. He didn't spend a lot of question marks about talking to everyone about what to do. He just did it. And when God speaks to you, when God is dealing with you, when God wants you to enjoy something, don't think about it too much. Don't worry about it so much. Don't you know, get with all the crowds and all the people and have to do some, you know, marvelous, you know, planning and exercising of your, you know, ability to formulate a dogmatic, precise, you know, step-by-step -step program. Run for it. Go for it. Run. Do like Peter. Run after where Jesus is and go find him because where he's not, you are at. And that was obvious with disciples because they were all standing around trying to figure out what to do. That happens a lot when I see Christians get together. They don't know what they're doing. But go find where Jesus is. Then do what he says to do. You know, I've been praying about this one thing that I've heard some messages on, you know. And I'm still wondering about what to do, but I'm not going to do it unless Jesus tells me to. You know, because I don't want to get involved in something where he's not. I want to get involved in something where he's at. And so today, for me, I enjoyed the Easter service that I went to. You know, and it was... It was Typical like anybody else's, you know, except for I enjoy the pastor, you know, and this particular pastor that I enjoy doesn't say anything wrong. <laughs> and I know. <laughs> My wife's going, you know, she's always waiting to see me, you know, like she's looking at me at the corner of her eye, you know, kind of cringing like every time the pastor says something because it's like, am I going to react to it? It's like, I don't react to anything. I don't care if he's right, he's right. If he's wrong, he's wrong. It only so happens this is like a record, you know, that... um as far as she's known me, as long as she's known me, she hasn't known me all my life as a Christian, but as long as she's known me, she hasn't seen me, you know, enjoy a pastor very long, even though I worked with some and she worked in the ministry with me with some, or seen a pastor teaching and 
him being right, you know, biblically, you know, correct, you know, and just me enjoying it and just going, yeah, man, I'm digging it. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Hey, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord, we're all in it together. We're in unity. You know, it's like, ah, we're one accord. You know, it's been four or five weeks now. And she's like, waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> you know, and I told her, I said, look, if God wanted me to see that there was something wrong in the ministry or something going on in the man's life or something that God wanted to reveal as far as the style of teaching or way, he would have already done it. But instead, I prayed and asked for a place that I could go and just enjoy. And so God gave it to me, and I'm enjoying it. And that's kind of what you should be doing whenever you see Easter coming or you see some holiday coming or you have something in mind that you want to do. You should pray about it, but you should ask what you want out of it. Because God may change you to enjoy it, with all the rest because you may pull something out of it that someone else doesn't get and it may just be a test of your own obedience by going anyways every once in a while just to see if maybe just maybe God wants you there anyways my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Jesus's and Jesus is God's and as having nothing and yet possessing all things. I'm one of those kinds of people. I don't have much, but, you know, I feel like I got it all. You know, because if there's a dumpster around, I know how to dive. <laughs> if there's something that needs a little creative thought, I know how to get creative. If there's something that needs, you know, a little kind of little adjustment factor, you know, to make it work a different way, well, I try to work it. But I feel like I have all things that I need. They've been supplied to me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The living God giveth us richly all things to enjoy. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. You know, for me, I love where I'm at right now in my life. I mean, when I went to church, you know, I love where I'm at in church all five times I've gone or four, I think four or five, I can't remember. I abound. You know, for me, it was like kind of a new way of looking at it. It was like, yeah, you know, I'm abounding because I'm loving every minute of it. Loving every minute of it. And I don't mean in worship. I mean in the Word. It's like, worship's like, you know, the worship is, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, it's okay. But I can I can worship anywhere, any place, anytime. So, you know, the, 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 the team is good, you know, they're professional, you know, they, they do their thing, you know, and it's kind of like a, I'm guessing an Evan Wickham kind of style or some kind of, you know, popular style right now that I call ballad worship, you know, it's like all these ballad songs, you know, that they do complicated rhythm changes and wording and, you know, they do these things, you know, so it's all kind of, you know, like a conga drum and a guitar and, you know, kind of keyboard and simple but effective, you know, it's blessed. You know, and you can rest in it. But my wife keeps saying she's going to sleep in it. I'm going, no, honey. It's, you've been wound up too many times that you just, you got used to being hyped. Now you don't know what it's like to just be kind of like peaceful. But, you know, the word, I'm abounding. You know, it's like, wow. You know, I'm like really into it. And it's like, it just blesses me. I don't mean that it speaks to me, you know, like some profound wisdom or, you know, doesn't change me in some manifested way that I got to cry out and go up and after prayer and fall on my knees and go God but no it's like yeah 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 <laughs> you know it's one of those yeah <laughs> you know you've seen those kind of posters yeah but um I know I, I need to pose that so I can take a picture yeah <laughs> maybe I'll take a picture and get it out you know the camera but my point being is Learning to enjoy is learning to employ the gift of the Holy Spirit that He has come to give you to 
open your eyes and ears to having an abundance in a way of appreciating that of where you're at with what he's provided for you as you're in the place that you're at today. You may be in a small church or a big church or a mega church, but you can enjoy it as though you were the only one there, you and Jesus. And you can employ the Holy Spirit in one way to change you, to make you conformable and to fit into the rest of the surroundings that you're in. And that's what I do on Easter. I ask God to make me conformable to the day that people want to celebrate the resurrection. Yeah, woohoo! But the interesting thing is, in a kind of metaphorical way, but the interesting thing is, the pastor said something today I really enjoyed and I like, you know, and I, I agree 100% and I would say this to you. Just like we celebrate on Sunday, the first day of the week, you know, just happens to be the first day of the week. Could have been a Monday, the first day of the week, but it wasn't. It's Sunday, so we celebrate church on Sunday because it's the first day of the week, and that was the day that Jesus rose from the grave. You know, so we celebrate getting together to break bread and to you know the word and all that stuff. You know, and enjoy. You know, because it's the first day of the week, and it's when Jesus rose. So we celebrate that with church. We celebrate that with the Bible. We celebrate that with going to church. We celebrate that every Sunday. Do you get the point? It's not about one day a week. Although, only once did Jesus rise from the grave. And he'll never do it again, because he doesn't have to. He's not going to die again. But, only once was the actual resurrection day happen. But, our ability to rejoice and be glad in it is every Sunday we get together with the crowds of people that were just like the disciples, sitting in the upper room, kind of wondering what happened. And then having the Bible read to us and having the explanation given to us and having an expository way of looking at it, which is really preaching, by the way. <laughs> In case you're wondering, there's no exposition of the Bible. It's preaching, pure and simple. It's not teaching. unless you know, If you're not writing stuff down and you're not being asked questions, it ain't teaching. It's preaching. But preaching is good. I like the preaching. It's like preaching. It's like, yeah, okay. Take it in. And then teaching can be made applicable by your own participation in it, whether you choose to use the Holy Spirit as a teacher and go home and you know meditate on it and think about it all week long, or whether you're just you know carnal and you just got preaching and it's gone in one ear and out the other, you know, and you're gone and you don't even remember what the pastor said. Okay. But my point being is that as God is available to you by way of his Holy Spirit, use him. He's here to serve by causing you to be aware of him and to hear him where you are and to make you knowledgeable in God's will not just in his will but in his word and not just in his word but in his direction and not just in his direction I'm trying to take all these things to say not in this not in this not in, if I was writing it down it'd be simple but if I'm saying it right off the top of my head I'm kind of going I got a headache <laughs> you know if I keep repeating that I got a headache going yeah you got a headache yeah you got a headache but the point being is not just but in all things, turn your life over to the Spirit of God and let Him lead you. Because as many as were led by the Spirit of God, they became sons of God. And that's what you want to do. In all things, in everything, in all thy ways, acknowledge Him. In all thy ways, let the Spirit of God lead you and you'll become a son and daughter of God by the Spirit of adoption where we could cry out to Him and say, Abba. Where we could worship Him on the Resurrection Day where every Sunday could be Easter for us. Because that's what it really is. Sunday is Easter. Every Sunday.